What's up YouTube? So today we're going to be looking at Groove and Swing within Cubase 12. So what is Groove exactly? Well, I think the easiest way to put it is Groove is something that will take your drum beats from something that will make you nod your head to something that will make you move your entire body. So let's just get into it. Okay, so I've got a one bar loop here with the kick happening on the first and third beat and the snare on the second and fourth. And I've got my quantize set to 1 16th, which means each bar is divided equally into 16 subdivisions. So if I paint those in, we hear that the hi-hat will play 16 times in every bar. Now if we go over here into the inspector and go to the quantize panel, if you don't see it, hit this cog and make sure you've got quantize checked. And then I'm going to check this box, auto apply quantize. And now if you play about with the swing amount, we should hear and see the effect that that has on this 16th pattern. Now you can see that as we increase the swing amount, every other hit in this 16th pattern gets shifted along towards the next hit. A quantized swing of 0% is just a straight 16th pattern. And a quantized swing of 100% gives us a triplet pattern. So even with a small swing amount, like say 20%, will give us a very different feel from zero swing at all. So let's A, B that. So you can really feel as we add more swing, your body starts to move a lot more with this very simple drum beat than it does with just a straight 16th. Now if I add some extra kick drums in here, we can really start to feel that. And with the swing up at 100%, you get that real late 80s, early 90s kind of hip hop vibe. And like I say, making it a little bit more subtle gives you that real bounce. Now, of course, it's not just a 16th that we can swing. Let's try it with an eighth. And you can hear we start to get that wonky laid back feel that's very popular within kind of lo-fi and stuff like that. All right, so I'm gonna bring in some audio. I've got this top loop here. And if I play it along with the drum beat, Now it does kind of work as your ears get used to that groove very quickly, but let's see what happens if we match the swing of the MIDI with the swing of the audio. So we can do this quite visually as we can see the transients very clearly in this audio file. So as I start to increase the swing amount, you can actually see the grid within the arranger start to move. So if we line this up with the transients of the audio, let's have another listen. Let's do some AB and so with the swing. And without. You can really hear how much tighter the overall feel is. So that's how to match a MIDI groove to an audio groove. Let's say we wanted to do it the other way around. We'd already come up with a MIDI groove that we're happy with and we want the audio to match with that. We can quite easily do that in Cubase 12. 
I'm going to put my swing amount to 20, and then I'm going to highlight the audio, and up in the toolbar at the top here, I'm going to select free warp. Now if we zoom right in on this audio clip, you can see we have these little markers here where Cubase believes the transients are happening within this audio file. And by hovering the mouse over, you can see this little white line snaps to those transient points. So if I just go to one and click the mouse button, you can see it gives us a warp marker. So I'm going to do that for each transient. And I can just drag each warp point to line up with our 20% groove. Let's have a listen to that. Uh, very cool, but let's bring our quantize amount up to 100%. See how we go now with the free warp. Yeah, it still sounded really tight, but let's bring it back to this 20% because I was kind of feeling it. Now you can see in the drum editor that the grid doesn't actually update with the swing amount. Now that is by design rather than by accident because we can actually have different grooves for each of the different drum hits. So you may notice that as I play about with the swing amount, the quantize panel at the top here updates as well. Because this panel here is basically the same as this panel here. Now if we look down in the drum editor and the snap amounts. You can see we can have a different grid amount for each individual drum which can come in very handy. And if we want our new swing to appear in this list. What we need to do is click on the quantize panel. And at the top here we have this little plus button. Save preset. Hit it once. And now that swing amount is always going to be available. And you see is now available in the drum editor as well. So let's talk about triplets. And let's change this to an eighth triplet. Draw that in. And what we can see with the triplet is that instead of each beat being divided into four equal amounts, each beat is divided into three, one, two, three for the next beat. We get this kind of sound. And if we go with the 16th triplet, you can see that each beat is now divided into six. If we start playing about with the patterns, we can get some nice interesting grooves. I'm going to put my kick drum to triple it as well. And let's bring the audio back in. Now triplets, as the name suggests, means we're dividing everything into threes. But what happens if we say divide everything into five? Let's have a look. If I go into the quantize panel, set the grid to quarter knot, and under triplet, change it to five, save it as a preset. And now you can see each beat is now divided into five. And we get this sound. Let's change the drum to quintuplet as well. Take out some of these hi-hats. Kind of bring in the audio, you can we have some really drunken, skewy beats. So 
So let's say we're working with an actual real life drummer. Now the most talented drummers will have their own natural groove, which won't be as mathematically perfect as something we can program in the way I've showed you in Cubase. So what do we do in that situation? I've got this drum beat here that was recorded by Clyde Stubblefield, who was infamously James Brown's funky drummer. And if I try and match my MIDI drum beat up with this one using the quantized swing amount, you can see we can never get it quite fully in line. It's always going to sound a little bit weird. So what we can do in this situation is go into the audio and go to hit points. So in here we have this threshold amount, which you can see moves these two lines here. And if I pull the threshold down so that it detects each one of those drum hits, you can see it creates these hit points. And if we also play about with the intensity so that we get a little orange bar on each of these points. And then I hit this button here, groove, which will create a groove quantize from these hit points. And now in our quantize panel, you can see we've created a new groove quantize. If we want to, we can rename it. So I'm going to call this Clyde Groove. And now if I go back into my drums and hit auto apply quantize, our MIDI should now match our human groove. Okay, so that's it for now. Hope you found that useful. As always, thanks for watching, but also a big thank you to my Patreons for their extra support. Now, if you do want to support me via Patreon, check out the link in the description below. Anyway, that's it for now. I've been Craig Lopez. This has been Tutorialism. Now go make some grooves. Peace.